Hello everybody and welcome back to the workbench where you are seeing actual materials in front of us on a Tuesday for a change. So for those that don't know, recently on the live streams we have been working on some South Eastern and Chatham coaches out of ratio coaches. I have some spare parts left over, I need a grounded carriage body, so I thought why not make one of these in a time lapse form for the Tuesday video so that people who can't see, can't watch the live streams can see how we do it. Now I've cheated a little bit here in that I've already made the end and the front of the bird cage because quite simply you can get them from Roxy Mouldings as a casting. I expect anyone that wants to copy me will do so rather than getting them from me. Uh, getting them from Bastcard, scratch building like me. We'll be doing the two compartment with luggage design as per this one here which is the easiest. I actually only have one side for this. But again, it's it's a grounded body, it's fine, it's only going to be seen from one side. So I have actually, for the time being, cut a bit of 20 mil plastic card that is the same size as this. Now this is not how long it's going to be, it's going to lose some, you know, you can see here that's slightly longer, so that will actually get cut down. But once this is back together, I will cut this to match. I'll probably also cut the windows in it as well so you can at least see through. Being a grounded coach, we're not going to have an underframe on it. So there's no buffer beam on here, and I've removed the buffer beam from the original ratio end that we'll be using at this end of the carriage. I have also, as you can see here, got a lot of sleepers. These are standard Pico sleepers. They've had the webbing removed to separate them and they've had the chairs taken off the top. That took a while. When the new layout is done this will be stuck straight to the baseboard so I've done enough sleepers that I can have a base layer and then some sleepers on top of that before this so it gets stuck down and when the ash surface goes round them it may well come high enough to cover the first layer of sleepers but you'll still have the second layer of sleepers before the bottom of the carriage so it's still lifted off the ground to help prevent rotting which is see why it was lifted off the ground but there is the remains of my bit of pico flex that i stole those sleepers from so Without further ado, let's queue up the saxophones and into super fast build mode. So that went well. For those that didn't notice at the end of the um, time lapse there, the thing just kind of shattered. I'm sure you've all noticed though. It has been repaired and the, the reason it's shattered is this brittle grey plastic is horrible. The, this very very old got it second hand. Actually this is the bit that actually shattered along this window line here and across the top here that is all better. It actually lost the top corner of this as well. That is better you can just see some glue marks there and whilst I was finishing it off off camera a large portion of this bit went so I have made the rest of the cuts off camera to avoid having to look for things as they went missing so what do we have here we have the passenger compartment section obviously cut down this line here and 
along the edge of the docket. We also have the docket that will be being thrown away. And then from down next to the docket, we have the guard's door and a single panel with the panel beading down here. That is important to get the panel beading in the right place. That obviously came off this section here. So on this section, there is no panel beading here, but there is at this end where we have lost the final bit of the carriage. So along all of these we have retained the beading on the right hand side. So there we have the full size original ratio carriage. We take the ducket out, we move that, we swap these two bits round we place this bit here and we have our new southeastern style side. So if I place this along here, you'll see we're now getting panelling and door positions and everything to match with the southeastern style, the southeastern railway side that we want. So the next step is obviously to glue that together with, and I'll put an extra strip along the top and bottom behind it for strengthening it. We need to lose these um, door handles that are very southeastern, uh, grab handles even, they're not actually the door handles, very great, uh, great western looking, to be replaced with something more southeastern when it's done so for that I think we can go back into super fast build mode so let's queue up those saxophones Well, that's looking a bit better. We have a side now. Isn't it nice? So it still needs filler putting on it, uh, all the joins and sanding down and cleaning up. But it is there and it is usable. So what we need to do next is get that filler on, obviously. And then whilst the filler dries, we'll start working on the base. So I've got here a sheet of sorry, that is 10 foul plastic card and I will stick the sleepers to that to make our two layer base. I've already measured how big it needs to be. So it actually needs to be surprisingly wide, it needs to be 10 sleepers wide to get under the entire carriage body and then we will be putting on top in the opposite direction. See I won't fill in the space in the middle, there's no need for it. I will get 
as much as it is needed, but I will leave the illusion of space there as well. For today's filler, we will be using Squadron Grey Putty. I used to use Humbrol a lot. I decided to try out some Squadron Putty because I know a lot of other people use it when I started this project and needed to buy some more. So that is what I got. Grey was the only colour available. From what I'm told, there's no difference to the actual filler. It's just the colour. So that is what we are going with. So let us once again queue up those saxophones and enter superstar build mode. And we're back with most of a base made. So we ran slightly short. My calculations were slightly off. This does actually need to cover pretty much all of this to be long enough. And so I think I will make it all of it. So I've got some more sleepers to cut out and deed share. So I guess we'd best do that and get them stuck on. Okay, and so there is our base. Obviously, this is looking a bit worn with the paint where it's been scraped with the knife. So it will probably get another coat of sleeper grime before we actually attach the carriage to it. But you can see it's just the right size. For the carriage. To sit on now so that gives us something nice now so you, now we need to wait for the filler to fully go off which it hasn't quite yet once that's done we will use this so we'll get this filed down and use this side okay, in fact, look, we can do that now can't we just slice through that a couple of times now we've got the score line we can follow and then
the back of the carriage is now the right size. So we, we will cut some windows in this. The roof will be cut down once we have all four sides square and can mark it a bit better. But we're starting to make some real progress on this now, so I am going to let this go off, come back to it, file it down, clean it up. I might do that off camera, depending. And then we can see about getting this thing constructed and having a grounded southeastern railway carriage for the new layout when it's done to sit in the engine shed area along where there is also a oh, where that, the, the existing one already has a brighton carriage although that does also need a new base making for it so that'll be fun so yes see you soon guys okay and we are back again i have Filed, uh, I've sanded down the side of this. I've put more filler in it. I've sanded it down again. I think it's had three goes now, other than looking a bit light in the patches around where it's been filed. It's looking much better. There's no big gaps in it anymore. Whilst I was out, I've also given, other than the bottom, the base a coat of sleeper grime so once it's sat on the layout it will be sleeper grime coloured once the carriage is on it obviously that will hide all the holes that wouldn't actually be there in real sleepers so next jobs are to get this side marked out and holes for the windows cut in it get the carriage built into its four sides once that is stuck together we can measure the roof for shortening and get the gap cut out in the end for where the birdcage will be that'll be 26 mil across and 21 mil in is the correct size we need for this so we'll get that done get the roof modified and then it'll be time to paint it all so let's see if we can get all that done eh let's cue those saxophones
and there we are we're most of the way there now next step is to paint it i'm not going to sit and make you watch it dry first though because obviously it does need to dry then it needs painting so the body will be going in southeastern and chatham carriage livery the roof will probably get a grey colour to look weathered. It might get white initially, depending on what I've got in the paint pot. Obviously, I still need to make the roof for the bird cage end, but we'll do that once the rest of the carriage is actually together. We'll get it painted first, get the interior painted black, and you see I've only put one wall in there. I'd normally put I can only a partition here and a partition here as well. I've decided they've been taken out in this carriage's time grounded. So we've got like a mess hall and stored van essentially there. So there's your office and your mess for the loco crews and there's your stores. I may even, once it's on the layout, I've been toying with the idea of having this end over the birdcage with a wagon sheet over it to look like it's got a leak and it's just had a wagon sheet chucked over it to keep the water out so that is that for now i will get a coat of paint on this you don't need to see me paint it do you and then once it's painted and dried we'll be back See you shortly and i'm back it's yet another new day so we're not under the studio lights anymore we have some sunlight coming in but we also have a painted carriage it's not stuck together yet take that off take that off and if we have a look at it close up you will see that it's not painted very well so you can see along here there's a lot of brown showing through and what i've done is i painted the whole carriage in a woody brown color made sure that got nice coverage and then just went with a single coat of Phoenix SECR Coach Crimson so that you can see a lot of the wood colour showing through in places to look like the carriage has been sat around, neglected as it's been you know, it's sat in the yard as a grounded carriage. It's an office, it's not going into the works and getting lots of new varnish and stuff. So the idea is it's looking a bit worn, which I think is ideal for this. So the next thing to do is to get the glazing in, which will just be some clear acetate sheet stuck in with glue and glaze. We need to get a floor in it so that we don't have gaps around the bottom. And then get the roof on and get the final bit of the roof for the top of the birdcage made. And then that is that, basically. So. I guess it must be time for another time lapse. See you shortly.
Okay, so you can see now we have a floor in here, all the windows are glazed, the windows on the roof are glazed, so that is all ready to go together. We need to make the roof for here. We need to paint the floor once it's dry. Now I stuck that in with glue and glaze rather than super glue. I should have really done the floor earlier, but I forgot. And the reason I've used glue and glaze to stick the floor in is because A, it will stick, and B, it won't give off any fumes that fog up the glazing we've put in. So that will be the only glue we use from this point forward to make sure we end up with nice clear glazing. So I now need to leave all this to set. So once the glue is dry, we will come back and we'll get the roof, we'll get I'll get some paint, I'll do the painting as well, and then when we come back we'll get the roof stuck on and we'll get the roof for the birdcage section made. Then we can stick the carriage to its base. And we're done. Now when we're making the roof, the way we do this is we take our tin foul, the really really thin stuff, it's basically paper, cut it slightly bigger than what we want, we find something to wrap it around, which I have the ideal thing for these carriages, I've actually already tested it. Pour some boiling water in, and let it take shape. I will, I mean, it is, it is Sunday as I'm recording this. I've got my live stream tonight where I will most likely be doing a bit of that. I mean, not definitely, but most likely. So there's a chance. I've already done it on camera for you all. And I hope you saw it and were there if you did. If not, there'll be another live stream this Sunday. Catch it then. So, I don't really think that's something I can do on camera properly. I will see if I can do that. Because, well, I mean, honestly, it takes a while, take, can take a while for it to take shape. But that will give us a nice bend and we can stick it on and get it done. So, I shall see you all once all this is dry and the floor's been painted. And welcome back to yet another day at Grounded Carriage Land. Just finished editing what's recorded so far and we're coming in at half an hour now. I might end up splitting this, I'm not sure yet. It depends. It's now, but it is now Monday. The video has to go out tomorrow. So we kind of need to get this finished. So what's left to do, we need to stick a roof on. We need to stick it to its base. We need to make the roof for there. That genuinely is it. Two of those jobs are really simple. As I've said, earlier we are using glue and glaze for everything now because a it will stick it all and b it doesn't give off any fumes that could mist up the windows so that goes on there that goes on there and even though some has run down the inside there and you can see it through that window that'll be fine that will not set like that it'll go clear and you won't even know it's there because of just how well this stuff sets i do love it in case you haven't noticed
ideally what we want now is some elastic bands to hold this all together whilst it dries so we can get on but I can't well, I don't believe I have any and I can't even see my bit of shoelace that I usually wrap around stuff to hold it together so that's no good I have no idea where that's gone never mind you think I'd have thought about these things before starting the recording wouldn't you what we're going to worry about next is getting a roof on the birdcage. For that we're going to bring in a bit of 10 foul plastic card. Would you believe that's, at, that's almost the perfect size we're after because we want it slightly bigger than what we're trying to cover. Now to get this to bend we want to put it in something that's round. Yeah that's plenty too big and for that I have a very convenient coffee press. Just one more reason why coffee is an important modelling aid which somehow the kids have managed to get stuck in a way it's not meant to stick because I've used this before to do this exact job So we get that pressed down in there like that. We then fill this with boiling water. And we'll leave it for 10 minutes or so. So I'm going to go do something for 10 minutes with the magic of editing. I'll be back in a second. Well, wasn't that a very quick 10 minutes? So we can now slide this out. And we've got a nice curved bit of plastic card. and we'll remove the weight that I put on there. That's how you know it's actually a different shot because I had a weight on there which I didn't put on. So that now just needs cut into size, sticking down and having some paint put on it. And I do believe we'll do those in that order. So the first thing we need to do is grab a pen, open it this way, we want to mark there, And we want to mark there. Now those don't look quite straight to me, but that's not a problem. We can always remove more. I can now see 
this roof, uh, this wall through the roof so I can mark here and here. a little bit more removing from it, not much at all. I say never be worried about not cutting off enough. Cutting off too much that is the problem. And then, as per the other bits, we'll stick a bit of glue and glaze on, get the roof stuck on. And then I'll be back once that's dried and got a bit of paint on it. See you soon with a finished coach. And we're back for the final time in this video as we have a finished carriage. It is looking rather nice if I say so myself. It's roof now on and painted still looking a bit shiny because it's still not a hundred percent dry yet the sides looking suitably worn so the whole carriage will need a weathering before it actually goes on any layout but it's not at any risk of being fitted to a layout at the minute i say this is for the sheds at oak hill mark two if I turn around and look behind me, Oak Hill Mark 1 is still very much there, so it's at no risk of being needed for some time. But it is now ready. Even with its fake completely unpanelled back that we will never see. But it does at least let us have the light through the windows as we wanted. So yes. That has been our grounded carriage build, showing how to construct one of these bodies, as I've also done on the live streams over the last few weeks. Should anyone want one of them, obviously all you have to do is this, but stick it on a chassis. It will fit the chassis for the regular ratio four wheelers, obviously not, not for the brake, that's longer than the others, but the thirds and the composites their chassis is the right size for this so you just build that chassis as normal and put the body on it instead of building it a floor and putting it on some sleepers but so this is you know, this is the first scenic item built specifically for the new layout and I think that's quite a landmark moment whilst we're here obviously now Monday the video is, this video is going out tomorrow I was asked on my stream yesterday how long it takes to make some of my Tuesday videos but some of them are really quick this video though I started the preparation work for this on Friday was it Friday? Let me double check the date on there. I was looking at it a second ago. 
So you'd think I'd know. Yes, I started the preparation on this on Friday when I finished work at five o'clock. It is now 25 past 10 Monday night. I've got most of the editing for this video done, so there's another five, ten minutes of editing. And it'll probably take it another hour to actually export the video to upload. So that is how long it takes to produce one of my Tuesday videos. But I do have good fun doing them, so it's worth it. You know, I'm really, these last two weeks when we've done the longer form videos, I've actually really enjoyed that. So if you've enjoyed that too, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see if I can come up with some more longer form projects to do for the videos like this. If you haven't, again, let me know if you've made it to this point in the video. I really do appreciate you sticking with it. I know it's been a long one, but I've enjoyed it and I really hope you have too. So please do remember to smash that like button. Or, or you know, conversely, you've got to this point and you haven't liked it, smash that dislike button and let me know why you haven't liked it. But thank you for sticking with me anyway. And whilst you're there, subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already so that you get alerted when I upload or go live. As of recording, I have 296 subscribers. I would love to see that hit 300 before we start the live stream on Sunday. That would be absolutely amazing. But until then, I'd like to say thank you for watching. And bye for now.